Common good is a phrase that particularly comes out of uh, Catholic social teaching, developed since the end of the 19th century uh, by the Pope, starting with Leo XIII, as they began to address the issues arising out of an industrialized economy. Uh, it is not what the economists call general interest. The general interest is a much more collective thing. Uh, the general interest is what is going to increase GDP or what is going to make things happen in a way that raises the total value of wealth in a community, a nation, an economy. The common good looks, starts with the intrinsic value of each human being and looks for policies that will maximize the opportunity for the, each human being with their limitations or their advantages, their backgrounds, in relationship with other human beings to flourish. Common good is, uh, kind of springs out of a, a theological uh, understanding of the human being created by God in the image of God, uh, saved through the, the life and death and resurrection, ascension of Jesus Christ, uh, of infinite intrinsic personal value. When we allied that into something more general, uh, you begin to lose that focus on the individual in community. Internationally, there's something called the Gini Index, which, which measures inequality in a society uh, from zero to one, one being absolute inequality and zero being absolute equality. Now, the frightening thing over the last 30, 40 years is we've seen quite a sharp move in all the wealthier economies uh, up that scale. And uh, there's a lot of outlook, economic outlook. I was reading some very good papers over the summer by the former head of the Council of Economic Advisors, Lawrence Summers, uh, that, that um, uh, suggests that in the next 30 or 40 years, economies will not grow much in the most economically um, wealthy countries. But where they do grow, the growth will go to the top 1% or at most to the top 10%. And that becomes a danger to human stability as well as human flourishing. We ha have to be aware that inequality has different effects in different parts of life. In some areas, inequality is, is deeply sinful and wrong. And that's where it diminishes the human being. So for instance, inequality of health care seems to me to be like saying inequality of lifeboats on a sinking ship. Inequality of education is a very, very serious problem. It's not just waste of potential resource. It's actually saying that the intrinsic value of a human being is somehow different because they're from a wealthy or less wealthy background. And in the end, that becomes a major source of instability. Now that becomes sinful because uh, it, again, does not recognize the common good. It does not recognize God's creation of all things uh, for the universal benefit of all people. The whole tone of the prophets is, remember where you came from. You didn't make yourself great. Who thinks you're great? You were given greatness by the grace and love of God. So you then have a responsibility as the wealthy to care for those uh, around you. It's given to you for a purpose, as a vocation, a call, if you like. Now, I in our modern society, uh, people, there are very, very, very few people who become wealthy because of entirely of their own effort. I mean, even people like Bill Gates depended on a million software engineers around the world doing incredible things. Absolute genius. Uh, and therefore, this sense of responsibility that comes with wealth, which is one of those who's lived out particularly clearly, um, is, is something the prophets were getting at. They weren't going intrinsically saying all wealth is wrong. They were saying the clinging on to wealth, the piling up of personal advantage, inequality is the problem.